Okay, welcome back to this series where we walk through this LLVM tutorial on the LLVM.org website. The tutorial is called My First Language Front End. Using LLVM, we're doing the C++ version. Uh, there's also an OCaml version, but we're gonna we're doing the C++. We're through the first uh, five chapters and we're almost through to, to the sixth chapter but uh, I have a bug in my program um, I assume though the code from the code listing does work um, let me just verify that so that in case I need to call on the their code as a means for debugging then I can that, that can give me an easier time I think Okay, so this is their code. I'm gonna call this their code dot zero six or not dot but dash zero six. Again, I'm gonna try to compile their code. Oh wait, I have to change the include location uh oh I have trouble compiling their code no member named get data layout Did their last version compile? I didn't remember testing this. Their last version did compile, but the newer version does not compile. Huh. What did they change? No member named get data layout. I have get data layout in this uh, chapter six code, but no get data layout in the chapter five code. I see. Something has changed. I think they've changed this tutorial. And I have a feeling they did that recently, maybe, and probably, hmm. I'm going to double check their chapter five code. Yes, they change all of their code. I think um, this set data layout thing. Hmm. I could either try to debug hmm, their code, but I feel like I'd rather try to debug my code. I'm gonna just try to debug my code. Okay, probably just made a mistake somewhere. Okay, um, so when I run this code, let me 
let's see here how do you write code in this uh, I forgot the syntax for the extern statement let me just go find it Okay, looks like this. Print D makes that unknown token when expecting an expression. I'm going to search for that error message. Unknown token when expecting an expression. So then get mm. cars primary. I'm going to print out the um, like I wonder when this was happening, right? Um, it's trying to parse primary. One plus two is having, well, everything is having problems now. One plus one is not even generating anything. Um, one. Something really, really wrong has happened. So uh, I'm gonna try to go to the top level where this top level expression is is getting red and maybe try to do some debugging there hmm this is the main loop we're gonna ignore semicolons um handle top level expression we're gonna parse the top level expression uh, and then code gen. So here, I guess I will say something like parse complete so that I know the parse actually worked. Uh, chances are the parser had some problems is what I'm expecting. Um, okay. Let me build this again. Well, it didn't say parse complete. So that's a problem. I think I'm going to use the debugger. Use the LLDB debugger. And then I'm going to pause on this line 917, I believe. So I think the way to set a breakpoint is say B the file name colon and then the line number. And then I'm going to run it with the R command. Um, okay. 
Okay, we're paused here. And let's step through this baby line by line. Um, let me see. My suspicion is it never made it back to this line. I guess I'll go step in. I forget the commands. Let me do help. Uh, so I can stepping into calls. So I want to do S to step in. And I, I believe N means next. It steps over calls. So I want to step in. Uh, okay, so we're gonna parse unary expression. I'm gonna step over this one. I'm just gonna parse a primary. And the current token is a number, which makes sense. Uh, let's step in there. Uh, the number value. Uh, I think I can print. Can I do this? I can. <laughs> I can print the number value. Um, the number value is one. I'm gonna step over this, and then it's gonna return. Okay, sounds good. It's gonna. So the first call to parse primary returned a number, presumably. We're on line seven sixty nine now. We're on this line and that returned. And then now we're going into this parse bin up right hand side. I'm gonna get the token precedence. Um, I'm gonna print out what that is. Is zero. Is it zero? Where's the current token? Current token is 43. Consult the ASCII table. What's 43? 43 is the plus symbol. Oh, we didn't instantiate the, um, the, the token table. Whoops. Okay. I can print the. So that's a problem, probably. This precedence. Um, that's got a. This is a map, but we haven't put entries in the map. Uh, we probably need to do that. So I'm. I'm going to go find the code that is doing that. Ah, it does it in the main function. Okay, I will do that. fix that and then recompile it. Um, I don't know if it fixes the problem or not, but uh, maybe not. But we'll see how I, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna send the same breakpoint, run it. Do one plus one again. Step into it. I think I'm gonna skip over that one and go directly into the binary one. Okay. So this time, hopefully, we will actually have a token president. Yeah, of twenty. That is correct. That's the president of the plus operator. Uh, what is the expression president? Zero. So. Um, so we're going to do this next clause, 
here. Now we're going to parse unary again. Oh. Oh, wait. No, we're fine. Let's step into this parse primary now. And it's a number. So, okay, I'm going to step over this one. So I have two numbers now. This is going to return the number. And at this point, if we we have a right hand side, right hand side is this. I can't really re read this, <laughs> but presumably right hand side is an AST node. The next precedence is zero. So the President is not less than the next president, so we go down here and we're re ready to return this node. That sounds right. We're on line 784 now. Here. And we're going to continue. We're going to do some more. Huh. Um, okay, so this is not, it's because this is not true. We need this to return negative one, I believe. And that's probably what their listing did. Let me think. Probably wanted to, if it would have been a zero, then return negative one. Yes. If it's zero, okay, that makes sense now. I'm just gonna say if it is zero, return negative one. Else, okay. To get the negative, we need a negative one to be less than the zero um, <laughs> on the while true line. On this line, we need we need this to go so that it will just r return the left hand side to stop this while loop from going. So I'm gonna just. Test this normal. Yes, that worked. Uh, okay, now let's try some fancy stuff. Hopefully that fixed it. Mm, all right, am I able to do something like this now? Put char d 48 or something. 
Yes, it can print zero. Um, all right, I'm gonna do this. Just print D. Print D can do print a number. We don't have print D on this system. We don't have print D. Whoops, okay. Maybe print D is a function that Linux has? But on my Mac, I don't have it. That's possible. No menu entry for print D. Oh, I didn't need to rebuild it. But anyway, I did. Uh, so I'm gonna try extern put char d put char d fifty three. It prints this five over here. Uh, I probably should fix my printing so that they, it doesn't get jammed onto the same line. <laughs> But I'm going to try this colon thing. Ah, that did not work. We have more bugs. Uh, expected function name in prototype. We did have a parse complete, but then we have a unknown unary operator. Log error expected function name in prototype. Let me try this. Oh, there's two places where we print that. Both of them are in the parse prototype function. So let me see. So this is probably the error in the parse. So I'm just gonna do a debugger again. And I'm going to pause in here. So this is line 820. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's run it. And then this time I'm going to do this binary thing. Okay. I don't even understand this line of c code. Like, what, what is it doing here? It just returns zero. Oh, okay. I, I think I understand what it's doing, actually. Um, okay. So, let's try to parse this prototype. So, if it's not a token, well, I'm going to print out the current token. What is the current token? It's negative 11. <laughs> What is negative 11? It's the word binary. So if it's not a token identifier, oh, okay, I get it. I'm gonna go to, uh, I should not have this, this check should go away. I got it now because that, that check was disallowing uh, my binary and unary operator declaration. So that's why um, that check actually went over to here or something. Well, 
here. Yep. Okay. Let's try to build it again and hope that this time it is actually fixed. Okay, I'm gonna try that again. This binary thing. Oh, that worked. Yes, I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna do print D because <laughs> we found out that doesn't work on my computer. I'm gonna do uh, extern put char D X. Okay, so now I can put char D 48, but I can also put char D 48 colon put char d 49 colon put char d 50 and semicolon and then that printed 0 1 and 2 that's awesome uh I, this this thing is starting to annoy me so um what i'm gonna do is put a new line before that evaluated to is printed uh, so that we can uh, we can see the output sort of separated out by itself so basically the way that this this colon works is just by you just can put multiple statements on a line is more or less what that's doing for you or you just combine this guy like this is x here this is y you just evaluate all of them on one line that's all that's doing we can also define a bunch of other primitive operations such as these so why don't we do that okay so yeah let's define some of these let's play with these things Okay, I'm gonna try this unary thing. Define unary exclamation point of V value, which is if value then zero, else one. So not of one. Evaluates to zero, not of zero, evaluates to one, not of five, evaluates to zero, not not of six, is one. That makes sense. We have an unary negative, uh, unary negate. So while we can do one minus two, we can also do unary negate. 0 minus the value. That's actually surprising. So negative 45 is negative 45. So I can do negative 7 plus 3, negative 4. Wow. All right. That, that is awesome. That's actually awesome. Uh, we can do a greater than. No. <laughs> Previously, we only had less than. So like 3 greater than 4. Doesn't work. This sick false. <laughs> Three greater than four sick faults. But if we define what greater than means, I'm gonna do a space with precedence of ten. Okay, that's a little weird. I'm gonna do it like this. L and R are less than L. Okay, I'm just I'm just copying up from here. Taking some liberties with the variable naming. So now I can do three greater than four. And it does not say fault. <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay. 
3 greater than 4 3 greater than 4 is is 0 4 greater than 3 is 1 okay beautiful um and then we have the logical and and so forth given the previous if then else support we can also define interesting functions for io for example the following prints out a character whose density reflects the value passed in oh i love this i, I love this this is like ascii art um so i'm gonna i'm gonna follow this code and say uh, let's do extern put char d first and then we'll do def print density t e um, if d is greater than eight then put char Two, which is the um, space else if d is greater than four then put char d 46 which is the dot else if d is greater than two then put char T forty three else put char D forty two. This is the star. Semicolon. Whoa, that's a lot of code generated. Awesome. Now we can do this. No. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, why is there a sick fault? Unknown unary operator. Oh, I didn't define this, this binary thing. Okay, ouch. All right, we'll try again. We can do it. I'm just gonna copy it this time instead of typing it all out. Oh, I will need to define this binary operator. And I think that's it. And then we can do this. Unknown function referenced. Hmm. All right. I'll do it one by one. It hasn't crashed yet. Oh, still unknown function referenced. Mm. Oh, this comments. Do, do we support comments? Probably not, right? We might need to get rid of these comments. I don't remember writing code to support comments. Unknown token. Wait, let me try again. Oh, oh, it's the put put char d that wasn't defined. I see. Let me try again. Unknown token when expecting an expression. Does this still didn't work? Hmm. Mm, I'm gonna try to type it in again. Unknown 
token. Oh, because we haven't defined the greater than operand. <laughs> All right, we need this. I, I might just put all the code we need here in the same file. Hilarious. Uh, and then we need this extern statement. Okay, we'll do that like this. And then let's have this guy. Okay again did I work I think that maybe worked yes it printed this stuff perfect okay <laughs> I got it to work all right it's funny is it's very funny it is interesting the dependency thing <laughs> like it's not very it, uh, like you, you use the greater than operator without having de defined it already and uh, wh whereas in say JavaScript with a module system you can tell what modules you're importing and therefore what code you need to bring in uh here it's a little harder to but 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 the idea of custom operators is very intriguing i must say anyway um i think this works i'm gonna try to run their mandelbrot set thing uh mandelbrot set is a fascinating piece of mathematics i actually previously i had done a video about mandelbrot set uh, this tutorial is gonna walk me through uh doing this in the terminal using kaleidoscope and i think that's amazing i think that's really amazing i also think maybe i need some of these things i'm not sure is it using this and no is it using or do i need negative under I'm going to put this in just in case. Um, and let me see. There's a, okay. He's going to just write the code to compute the Mandel Prats. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Okay, will this work? Uh, unknown token. Unknown variable name. Oh, it, it does need this or operator. Let's, I'm just gonna put all of his code in. This is incredible. Um, I'll put the M in just in case. I didn't see him using it, but okay. Uh, equals. Uh, I think I had the binary. Unary negative, we had that. Exclamation point. Let's put that in as well, just in case. Okay. Why? Okay. What just happened? I think I don't I don't see any errors, so I'm gonna assume all that stuff worked. Mandel help and Mandel. Mm. 
mando help. I think that's a helper function of some sort. And we have mando. Okay. Let's try defining mando help. I think let's do me define Mendel. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see if we have magic here. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! There is the Mendel brat set. Wow, that's incredible. That is incredible. Um, Wow, that is really incredible that, uh, I mean, I, I didn't read this code or understand this code, but uh, I mean, this is a very, very little code to get that to happen. Um, and again, if you don't know what the Mandelbrot set is, uh, Google it. <laughs> and uh, if you like to watch me explain it, then you can Google for my video on the Mandelbrot set. So you can use different parameters. Whoa. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. All right. At this point, you might be starting to realize that Kaleidoscope is a real and powerful language. It may not be self-similar. I don't understand what that means but it can be used to plot things that are. <laughs> okay, with this, we conclude the add user defined operators chapter. So we, we finished chapter six. Okay, congratulations to you for following this far along. And uh, I, will, I will see you next time when I go do the next chapter.